never die. Even if this new Doom game turns out to be complete crap and thus tarnishes its mighty reputation. Oh yes, Doom, a game from way back in 1993, is still able to compete with modern day first person shooters and is in fact better than just about all of them. Why? Because it has fun, fast paced gameplay, and a level design that is pretty much second to none. Every day, new level wads are being created, and with its gameplay wads, well, can you really name a first person shooter that was released today that can truly compete with the likes of Brutal Doom? I think not. But we're not here to talk about Brutal Doom. Oh no, we're here to talk about something a little bit better. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be reviewing Project Brutality. And with that, let's fire up GZ Doom and take a look. First and foremost, keep in mind that Project Brutality is a refinement of many of the elements that were seen in Brutal Doom. Meaning that many of the things Project Brutality does, Brutal Doom already did, although in a less advanced fashion. Now for those who know nothing about Brutal Doom or Project Brutality, both mods change key aspects of the Doom gameplay. Now, looking up and down actually means something, as weapons are now far more accurate, and movement speed has also been changed. And of course, there is now an appreciable movement wobble. And you also have access to a Mighty Boot attack. But, Project Brutality changes the Mighty Boot attack and makes it less powerful. In Brutal Doom, you could kick a variety of the pinkies to death. Whereas in Project Brutality, well, it's a little more problematic. Project Brutality also changes some of the sounds. And, well, being a fanboy of a great many different franchises, I squee a bit whenever I recognize a familiar sound. Project Brutality also adds a small variety of items to the game, and they are controlled via a heretic-styled item bar. There is an auto turret that will lay down some serious hurt on enemies. There is a reinforcement teleporter that beams in helper marines, a portable healing kit, and two types of mines. Enemies will also drop a few power-ups here and there, ranging from demon strength runes to gun damage increasing power-ups that work somewhat like quad damage, to even a slow-mo power-up that will drop here and there. Now this game also introduces another cool concept. Now in Brutal Doom you had the option to offend the enemy by flipping him off. Well, here we have Doom Guy talk. At long last, old Flynn Taggart at last has a voice. And well, it sounds pretty good. And the lines are actually suitably cheesy. Many of them coming straight from the perennial classic that is the Doom comic. And of course, Doom Guy is always a man and a half. As with Brutal Doom, the weapons in the game have been changed quite a bit. And well, if I had to pick one word to describe the weapons in Project Brutality, well, that word would be orgasmic. First and foremost, we need to take a look at the option menu. As by default, you don't get all the cool guns. Rather, you need to set the spawn option to anything other than Brutal Doom default to have the really cool stuff show up. This, of course, also determines what enemy spawns as well, but we shall get to that in a moment. The guns are as follows. The default assault rifle that blows the Brutal Doom one out of the water. It sounds and looks kick-ass and does some good damage all around, but it's almost immediately replaced with the superior carbine that has more ammo capacity and is more accurate, and it's really the game's go-to gun for basic enemies. Then you have the shotgun, and it's not nearly as useful in this mod as it is in Brutal Doom, or Basic Doom for that matter. And well, that's mainly because it doesn't fire all that fast, and it's not nearly as damaging as you would expect, but then again, I don't really have a problem with that, mainly because, well, the shotgun's been played out. I would like to use something a little bit different. But don't worry, if you like your Hammer of God, we will definitely have something that will serve quite well. Then of course you have the double barrel shotgun and it of course works just like it did in Vanilla Doom and Brutal Doom although I have to say I like the design of this shotgun more than Vanilla and Brutal. And now ladies and gentlemen here we have the Hand of Talos. The Hand of God the auto shotgun. Oh yes like I said, you do not need to be disappointed that the pump-action shotgun is, shall we say, a bit weak, as it is definitely replaced by the auto shotgun, and it's every bit as awesome as it sounds. 
is it a very good weapon for clearing out massive waves of enemies? And it gets even better. Every weapon has a upgrade that will spawn randomly in the game. If you can actually get an upgrade for the auto shotgun, it will be the magazine upgrade, which will allow you to reload the weapon far faster. And it gets better. Every weapon has a special ability in addition to its alternate fire mode. And the auto shotgun special ability is another fucking auto shotty held in Doom Guy's hand for twice the pleasure. There are several flavors of the gun of mini barrels, one that acts as a complete and total bullet hose. But not only does it sound really cool, it also is absolutely key for fighting huge hordes of enemies, as it just shreds anything it's pointed at. Then you have a slightly slower bullet hose. It's a little more powerful, and you can actually just load in a single box of ammo that won't pull from your main ammo supply. And this is very good for those times when you're running a bit low on bullets. Then you have three explosive weapons, the rocket and grenade launcher. Each of them have their own ammo supply. The rocket launcher is straightforward, and its secondary fire is the firing of five rockets at once, which is every bit as awesome as it sounds. And then you have the Auto Grenade Launcher that has access to several grenade types, ranging from Basic Explosive to Incendiary. The Incendiary Grenades are, well, fun incarnate. The last explosive weapon is the Single Shot Grenade Launcher that works as it does in Brutal Doom. Then you have two Tier 1 Energy Weapons, the Default Plasma Rifle, which can be dual wielded and works as it does in Basic Brutal Doom. Then you have the second plasma rifle that looks like the Doom 3 plasma rifle and does a bit more damage than the basic one and uses the same sound effect from the Fallout 3 laser pistol. Next you have the two tier 2 energy weapons. The freeze gun that actually uses a sound from Hexen that makes my inner fanboy squee oh so much. This weapon freezes enemy solid and then you can make them crumble. Cool party indeed. Its alternate fire is this pistol that makes shooting frozen enemies that much more convenient. Then you have the railgun that somehow makes railguns even more awesome than they already were in Quake 2. And it works as it did in that particular game. Lastly, you have the Tier 3 energy weapons. We have the standard BFG that looks like a massive box of death that basically destroys entire roomfuls of enemies at a go. And then of course we have something even cooler. We have the BFG chain gun. That is every bit as awesome as it sounds. And we are not even done yet. We next have the Hell Gun! A gun that shoots the energy collected from demonic enemies. A gun so awesome that you have to make the bloody metal symbol every time you pick one up. Unlike in Brutal Doom, the game does have a couple of pistols. The basic pistol that can be dual wielded, the revolver, and an SMG. These guns are cool enough, but well, I find myself never really using them, as the game gives you some rather powerful enemies to fight, and these are rather useless against them. Although I rather like the SMG for what it is, more than its actual usefulness. The rest of the weapons are pretty much unchanged from Brutal Doom, although the grenade is slightly less powerful and more balanced. Now, if the weapons were not cool enough, the mod also introduces a huge number of new enemies and changes the behavior of some standard enemies. The imp can now leave about like it did in Doom 3 and cling to walls, thus making it a bit annoying, but it does serve to keep you on your toes. The new enemies basically expand from the existing enemy types. There are now several types of zombie man, each with different weapons, skins, and animations. There are now different types of pinky as well, and of course there are different types of Hell Knight, and the Hell Knights are actually pretty bloody cool. The Hell Knight itself has been modified to have a charge attack that can do massive damage. And of course there are several others that go along with it, including a G Hell Knight, a Cyber Hell Knight, and a Cyber Baron. The Revenant is now even more annoying, as they can now snipe you with long range railguns. Which is rather angering as one can imagine, but certainly in character. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we have something even worse than the Revenant. Oh yes, we now have to face the... Flesh Wizard. That is a name that can either be humorous or not. And let me tell thee this, it is certainly not. This is by far the most annoying enemy that Project Brutality adds. He takes a considerable amount of damage to put down, 
and he can go invisible, and he does a massive amount of damage. So much like an archvile on steroids. Furthermore, built into the WAD itself is the ability to play Brutal Doom version 20, or just plain, simple, traditional. Traditional works like Classic Doom, and has no reloading or anything of that nature, but does have new sprites for the weapons. And Brutal Doom version 20 works like typical Brutal Doom version 20, but this has new sounds for some of the weapons. Overall, the gameplay is fun and fast-paced as Brutal Doom, but now there is so much more variety to the gameplay. With the numerous enemy types and cool weapons, this mod actually ensures that Doom fatigue does not set in during a longer play session. Really, it's very easy to get sick of shooting the same enemies with the same double barrel over and over again. Here, you've got plenty of different shotguns to choose from, and you've got plenty of different enemies to fight. You're not just killing the same basic Hell Knights over and over again, because around that next corner, you might have to deal with a Cyber Baron. Really, when it comes to gameplay mods, the best is not Brutal Doom anymore. That Colossus has been dethroned by the well-designed greatness that is Project Brutality. And now for something completely different. Well, it's not that different, it's still a wad, but just cut the gameplay footage already. Doom 2 Reload, it is, as the title would suggest, a reimagining of Doom 2, and it does an absolutely sterling job of it. All the levels are much larger and more detailed than their Doom 2 counterparts, but not so much that you get lost and thus spend two bloody months wandering around trying to find the bloody exit, thus ensuring that gameplay never bogs down. The enemies are well placed and never cheap, and I've not found myself shouting out BULLSHIT after a whole room spawned on top of me. The level design also is such that I never got doom fatigue by going around the same boring styled corridors over, over, and over again. The texture work has also been well done, to the point where they don't just use the same brown that so many mappers like to bloody well use. Overall, Doom 2 Reloaded is an amazing remake of Doom 2. It's a one that uses the concept of less is more, instead of using all the flashy effects that other Doom wads use for the punishing difficulty. It allows the player to enjoy what Doom does best. Shooting demons and painting the walls with their gore. And so that is Project Brutality and Doom 2 Reloaded. And as you can see, Doom 4 is going to have some pretty big combat boots to fill. And you can also see that Doom certainly has a fan following that rivals many modern day first person shooters. In fact, many modern day first person shooters probably wish they had a fan following as large as Doom 1's. And with that, I am Jitterlots, and I wish you good, brutal Hexen, and good, brutal Half-Life, or whatever makes you happy.